Welcome to Lunch and Learn, presented by Coda Bears. My name is Bill Golis. I will be your presenter today on the topic of MES, Manufacturing Execution Systems, in Epicor 10. All right, let's get started. The first thing is how do we access MES for the different environments, live test training or pilot. You'll see here that we have a training icon set up. When you go to the properties of that shortcut, it shows in the string that, that the config equals training dot sysconfig at the end. At the end of the string here, we're going to put a space, a hyphen, and then a capital M-E-S. That will now point that particular shortcut icon to the M-E-S for training. Again, we add the hyphen M-E-S at the end of the uh, target string. So if we apply that and say OK on that icon, it brings up a login screen, and this is going to be for the training MES. Once we log in, oh, and typically uh, shop users share a logon at most companies where it's shop, you know, the, uh, the uh, login may be shop or shop floor with a common password. Sometimes there's reasons to have everyone have their own password and own account but typically it's one login for each MES instance on the floor first thing we need to do is to clock in we're going to enter our employee ID number in the field and tab and you'll notice that now we are clocked in or I'm sorry the, hey, first we have to confirm our shift it will default to your uh, to the shift that is associated with that employee. If that is the shift that we're clocking into, we say OK. And now it shows that we're clocked in at the time and the date. So our time is now being recorded as clocked in, but we are not being recorded against any production activity. It's our time being recorded as indirect. So now we want to start a production activity. What are we going to work on today? So we select the start production activity. That will bring up the Start Production Activity screen, and we need to choose what our job is going to be. Today, we're going to go on to 2198. Once we tab out of that, we have to select our assembly and operation as well of what we're going to work on. Today, we're going to select the sawing operation, Op 10. We're not going to worry about the setup being complete. And now we have our job, assembly, and operation that we're going to work on. I notice that the resource group populates and the operation populates. Once we select OK, now we have clocked in to that particular activity. I notice that our clock in time was 431 here, and our actual clock in to the activity is 432. And once we are clocked into the activity, we then have to log out of the MES so that our colleagues can also do their clocking in and logging in. So we will log out. Now we're still clocked in to the system as in our time's being recorded as working and we're still clocked in to job 2198. We just aren't logged in to MES so that the next individual can come up and enter the information for their job. Now we work all day and we've completed our day. We're coming back to leave and now it's time to record what we've done for the day. And when we return to MES, we're going to need to log in again. And we can either select the login, okay, this time, or previously just put it into the employee ID window here. Again, 100 is our employee ID. We select that, and we notice that our job shows up in the active window. And we've been working for several minutes here it's 4 34 now and we want to report our activity so we're going to say end activity that'll bring up the end activity window i noticed that it does indicate production that's what we were doing and now we can come down to where we enter our what we've completed so on this project we'll say we report 100 pieces completed today if we were going to print tags for those pieces, 
with barcodes and such, depending on how your print tags are set up. We can do that right here by selecting the print tags button, but we won't be. Today we're going to report two pieces of scrap out of those hundred, and we need to give a reason for scrap or a reason for non-conform. So for our scrap, we're going to select our reason codes here and search. The problem with those today were scratches and blemishes from our sawing. So we're going to select that and it populates our reason. Now we also have one piece that was non-conform. So we're going to enter that as well. And we have to enter a reason code there as well. And here we're going to say that we had a certification missing for one of those pieces. And that records that as well. Now, we could select complete if we were done with the project, but we're not. This, this job has more than 100 pieces. If you reach a minimum of the units that are needed for the project, by default, Epicor will check the complete box. So look out for that in case there's still more to do. You may need to uncheck that box if you're not actually complete. If you wanted to, re to request the pieces be moved, you would check that box. It tells you what your next operation is, which is 20 for the drill press. If we select OK here, now that labor is being reported and the pieces completed are being reported. And it also clocks us out of that particular production activity. Now let's say that we actually, uh, there's still some more time in the day and we want to go do something else that is not production related. It's going to be an an indirect activity and the policy is that we need to record our time against that activity so and we're going to start an indirect activity that brings up a smaller window because basically we just have to choose what the indirect code is that we're going to log our time against let's see what we have here we'll search that and let's say we're going to clean up you know and we're going to sweep around our our machine and clean the area from our workspace so we'll select the cleaning labor that populates in we may or may not I need to have a resource group ID here depending on our setup and since we worked on the sawing we are going to select saw here because that's what we're cleaning and we'll say okay now you see our time is locked in again so it's recording our time against that indirect code we can see that we are cleaning up the saw area, but there is no job associated with it because we are not working on the job. We are indirectly cleaning up. So we go and we uh, clean up our work area and we still need to log out of MES. Never forget to log out because the next user that comes up will have to log you out before they can enter their information. So we log out. Now we go finish up our cleaning in the saw area. Once we are done, we come back to the MES station to report that we're complete. As usual, we have to log back in. And this time, we'll just put our user or employee ID in the field there. And it shows that we are clocked into sawing, but without a job, so we're in indirect. So we're going to say end activity here. Notice here that it is indirect, that all these are grayed out. We cannot enter material here. There's no next operation because we are just doing cleanup. So we just say okay. And that completes that indirect activity and our time has been recorded against it. Now we're going to start some setup activity. If we were involved in equipment setup, and we would select the setup activity. And here we have to select a job to set up on. We're going to go with 2198 again. In fact, we can start here at 2198 and get right to it. Okay. We're going to set up Operation 20 because we've already worked on Operation 10, but it's not completed. If you recall, when we did report our 100 pieces, it was not complete. But that shouldn't prevent us from doing the setup and getting started on the next operation. So we'll go ahead and do so. And we have entered our job, our operation, and 
we're going to say okay. Again, it shows us clocked into that particular job. And you'll see that our labor type is now S for setup as opposed to P for production. And we'll log out here like we always need to to let anyone else use MES. We'll proceed to our workstation, the machine for drilling, and we will set it up or do as much as we can. Then we'll come back from our setup work. Let's say it's the end of the day and it's time to end that setup activity. As usual, we need to log in to MES. We log in. It shows that we are, are setting up on 2198 and we're going to end activity here. Now you notice that from setup activity, you ha have the option to enter material scrap or non-conform. As during setup, you will likely create some scrap or non-conform pieces, and hopefully you'll create some good pieces at the end of the setup. So we're going to say that we created two good pieces before we determine that we are complete. I'm not going to print tags. We're going to say that we created five pieces of scrap during our setup. And here we should have a setup. And we don't have a setup per se, so we're going to say plan scrap because we are we expected some of this. And for non-conform, we're going to go with zero. Now, the fact that we've completed this setup and we have two good pieces, we're going to mark this as 100% complete. And the next operation is 30 for countersink. We're going to say OK here. Now that particular operation, 20, is recorded as completely set up. So just to show you that it should not tell us it's not set up now, we're going to quickly start production activity here for 2198. And we're going to choose operation 30. And it shouldn't tell us it's not set up. But of course, operation 20 hasn't completed. So we can march on and work on operation 30 now. But we'll choose not to since we've already been down that road. Now we're going to do some rework activity. Let's say we want to fix up those pieces that, that we caused some problems with on our setup, and we have a way to do so. So and we will go into start rework activity. And we're going to go with 21 and 98 here. And this is going to be operation 20. And we say OK. Up, oh, and we need to have a rework code, it says here. So within this setup, we need to have a rework code, and we'll see what our options are here. And we know that our problems were uh, scratches and blemishes that maybe we can buff out of these pieces. So we'll say OK here. Now we are able to work on that rework. And we'll go and we'll get our tools, and we will work rework those pieces and we're going to then come back and report what we have done we're going to say that only one of those could be salvaged so we've we report one is good we're going to report one is scrap we need to put that as reason here and our reason is going to be out of spec and we'll say that we could not rework that piece and keep it in specification and then we say OK. And we've completed that rework. So now we've been at work all day and we have done production work. We've done indirect work, the cleanup. We've done setup work and now we've done rework. It's been a good day. So and we're going to now clock out so we can go home. If we select clock out and we're already logged in, that's all we got to do. And once we've done that, the system says that you're done and everything is uh, is buttoned up. What else can we do with an MES besides record the activity? Well, you need to be logged in, of course. So we will we're actually, I'm sorry, clocked in and logged in. And now that we're back, it will log back in here. If we want to look at material options here, and we can issue material, and we can do returns. Here's a material issue to a job. We're not going to go through all this here, 
but you'll see that you can do your complete material issue if you are set up to be able to issue material with an MES. And we can do returns, back to stock. We can move work in process, get your non conformances with the material. Uh, we can record manufacturing receipts. And you'll see return assemblies, move materials. All these things are contingent on you being set up, the individual being set up as a material handler. You can also do a material adjustments and count entries and pick and unpick sales orders as well. There's also shipping and receiving options with MES. Uh, you can receive material, transfer orders, execute a shipment or miscellaneous shipment, subcon shipment, etc. There's uh, also services, info that can be entered with the MES, uh, depending on if you're doing service work and maintenance. These things like you know reading meters, recording hours on, on equipment, putting in requests for maintenance can all be done from the MES screen. And if you're a supervisor, there are also things that you can do in here. A look at various trackers, and these would be the same as you would see within the application of Epicor. If you wanted to view materials that were due, look at your PO tracker. As you'll see here, this has the same look of the track within the application that you can access from MES. And that covers an overview of what you can do with the MES Epicor 10. Uh, thank you very much for attending.